I thought it was important enough that I should probably talk to you about the Golden Globes the other night. Why, you may be asked. I'm interested in our weird celebrity obsession as a society. I'm interested in our overwhelming obsession with this culture that has to be damaging us. I don't, it's nothing new in this argument. I mean, we've been having this argument since I was a kid for sure, but maybe even longer than that. I don't know. Anyway, I ran into a problem though. No, I mean, I really did. I, I ran into a problem with the with talking about the Golden Globes. I basically ran into two problems. The first problem was I got distracted by the new board. The new what, you said? The new mixing board. So we in the studio here, we have a brand new Tascam DP24SD super board that I bought. And... It was kicking my butt, folks. I mean, it really was kicking my butt. And I feel like I'm familiar enough with sound engineering to know how to set up a, you know, a home studio, but man, this one kicked my hiney. It really did. So that was the first distraction, so I didn't tune in to the Golden Globes. The second distraction was Rosamond Pike. Now, this is entirely Rod's fault. Friar Cook's fault from from what the frock. I do the show What the Frock on the weekend with Rod Cook, Friar Cook, Sir Rod Bow, whatever name he's going by this week. Anyway, uh, the first episode of What the Frock was about the Goliards, and it was about a movie called The Libertine, which had as a supporting actress uh, an actress by the name of Rosamund Pike, who I had seen in Johnny English Reborn. And we both kind of had a thing for her. And anyway, because of him, I started following her on social media. Which turned out to be a mistake because she won a Golden Globe or some sort of award at the Golden Globes, and I, which I didn't see because I was busy fiddling with the Tascam board. And uh, I didn't see what award she got, and I, I literally don't care. But she posted a video on social media of her walking to get the award. And by walking to get the award, because the award ceremony was remote, as everything is now, she literally got off a chair, I presume, in her house or the hotel or whatever, and walked down a hallway. And that was it. And the social media post proved to me something that I already probably should have known, but I didn't, and that is that Rosamond Pike while beautiful and talented, is literally batshit crazy. Pretty sure that's what most social media proves of celebrities, but in this particular case, this dress was so distracting. And I don't mean in a good way. I, there are dresses that distract men, and I get that, but this isn't, this isn't what I'm talking about. This dress was so bizarre. I mean, it, it literally looked like red rolls of toilet paper and the way it hung was just not flattering in any way shape or form and to top it all off she wore black combat boots and it was the weirdest dress i might have ever seen not counting the meat dress worn by uh, lady gaga once upon a time which is all about you know celebrities and attention getting and attention whoring and all that. And that's what I was going to talk about. But like I said, I ended up not watching the show because I was working on the task on board, which is brand new. I had to, well, I didn't guess I didn't have to. I had an old board. I have a, I have a Behringer 1604 that I bought 20 years ago because I was in a band. 
long story that I'm not going to bore you with all. Being in a band was, it was both at simultaneously, it was the most creative time of my life. I mean, it really was. And at the same time, it was the most stressful time of my life. Bands are, ugh. <laughs> unless you're making a million dollars every year as a band, it's just stressful, man. I mean, it really was. We were not trying to make money. We just weren't. We were trying to write our own music. That's what we wanted to do. Problem was, we had people in the band that wanted to make money, and they wanted to play gigs. And to play gigs, you got to do covers, and we didn't want to do that. And so that created a lot of stress. I think in seven years, we went through, I don't know, eight or nine drummers. Because first off, drummers are flakes to begin with. But secondly, they wanted to make money because they're drummers and they figure they, they figure they're a time a dozen, I guess. I don't know. Good drummers are hard to find. They really are. And I don't mean good just in the sense of they can keep time. I mean, I mean good people. And we were a bunch of professionals. I mean, I was a CEO, CFO, and other people were as well. And it was... It was an interesting time. And like I said, it was the most it was the most creative time of my life. I was doing a lot of music arranging, a lot of music writing, and we were performing. I mean, we were I, I don't know how to say this without getting uh mundane, I guess. I felt like we were decent. I mean, we was it perfect? No. But with a little bit of work, maybe we could have been. I mean, we did do a live album at one point. Now this next song I'm going to do, I wrote some time ago, and it's a, it's a song about saying goodbye. Goodbye, Mary. 
last forever between Deer Island and the bay. Smile when you think of her, a warm breeze on a sunny day. She will always be a mystery. Challenge. I mean, it really was. At the same time, like I said, it was very stressful. So that was uh, that was almost the high point for, for the whole thing. We ended up getting a couple of gigs after that, playing for the city of Mastodon and stuff like that. It was, um, like I said, it wasn't just drummers. And then you got a guitar player that's um, cooking meth in his house. I'm not kidding. Uh, you have personality issues. You have. Uh, we had a rule about whoever wrote the song, physically wrote the song. By the way, that song was written by Chris Lawrence, a.k.a. Kobe Gill. Um, whoever wrote the song had final say on creative arrangements, and that created problems because then you, you end up with arguments over that. I mean, again, my specialty was arranging music, not necessarily writing it per se, uh, I like to think I'm a pretty good lyricist, or was. I'm not anymore. But but my strength was was in arranging stuff. So when I would arrange things, I would do it how I heard it. And of course, that isn't always the way the guy that wrote the song, like in this case, Al the Space Cowboy Gillette, didn't write it anywhere close to this. But this is how I ended up arranging it. Thank you. 
when I played that for Al, I thought he was going to I thought he was going to have a heart attack. He wrote it as kind of a southern rock thing and well, I turned it into that and he wasn't real happy about that. So, anyway, both of those were recorded on my old Tascam board, my 1604A 16 channel Tascam board and they were edited with Music Maker uh, back then. I think it was version 11, I don't remember. And and it has served me well through all these years. In fact, that Tascam board saved the radio station when I was on the radio station they had a really bad ground at one point in the guest microphones. And we just couldn't get anything done about it. We just couldn't get it fixed. And and so I actually installed that 16-channel board into there as a, as a bypass and a temporary thing. That, and, and that's how we worked for, I don't know, a good two months like that. There's pictures of it in there, and it uh, it has served me well. And it's just it's just old, folks. I mean, it's 20 years old. I bought it, like I said, part of the band thing, and then I've moved it. So moved it all over Modesto when we were performing and rehearsing, and then I moved it to Manteca when we moved there, and then I moved it here with me, and it has served me well. And it's 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 a good piece of equipment. It's just very 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 antiquated and it has started to develop grounds on some of the channels so i uh, i find myself moving my microphone from different channel to different channel because it was some days it would be on number 1 and some days it would be on number 6 you just never knew and i get tired of beating on things so it's not really the best way to handle equipment anyway so anyway i was sitting at home i don't know at least two months ago, I probably. And I get a text out of the blue from a listener, Roger, who wanted my home address because he wanted to send me something. Now, I happened to know that at the time Roger was in Wyoming, and so you know how I feel about my beloved someday home Wyoming, and so I thought, well, maybe he's going to send me a stick bumper sticker or a T-shirt or something, and that'd be cool because I love Wyoming. And... A couple weeks later, I get another text saying, hey, sorry, I, I dumped the text. Can you send me it again? So I sent it back to him. And a couple of days later, I got a small envelope in the mail. Very small. I mean, just a regular, you know, letter size envelope, not the number 10, the, the, the personal letter size envelope. And I thought, I wonder what that could be. I, I don't know. I opened it up and I was stunned by what was in it. It was a gift. Basically, the letter said, hey, Dave, we, we love what you do. Um, we really enjoy the show. Lisa and I enjoy listening to your podcast. Hope this gift stays to help, to helps to stay on the air. It's not much in the big picture, but we want to be supportive. And again, most of the cost that's involved with this is about two grand a year is, is uh, hosting and website and that sort of thing. And it's not a huge amount of money and it's not something I've never said to anybody. I don't think I've ever said to anybody desperately on the air. Hey, I need money. Or I've never pulled the Hal, Hal Turner card, you know, the send me $3,000 by midnight or this show will be gone. And I never will pull that. I, I have people every day telling me, Dave, you should charge for this. You should have a Patreon. You should do this. It's just, it's, it's just not worth it, folks. I mean, again, it's just my opinion. It's just entertainment. If you like it, great. If you don't, well, yeah, there's plenty of other shows, believe me. I'm sure that you can uh, you can find something there. Anyway, it was a very nice gift and I was I was taken really aback by it and I thought to myself, this is the kind of thing I don't want to just I don't want to just pay bills with this. I don't, I don't want to just, you know, say, okay, well, we'll pay the 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 ISP for the next 6 months or whatever. No, this has to be for something important and useful. And Rod and I were having some problems with the way we record What the Frock. Uh, you may not have noticed. We had a real problem a few weeks ago with some syncing issues, and it was driving me nuts. And I, so I I determined that we needed to do recording a certain way, which got me thinking. And I decided that what we needed was a new recording studio board that would allow us to do tracked recording. And so I took the gift that Roger and Lisa sent and I bought the Tascam 24DSP. No, SD, sorry. 
you got to get those you got to get those nomenclatures right and like i said i was working on installing it the other day which is why i missed the golden globes even though i saw rosamond pike's insanely weird dress proving that she's batshit crazy and it just took me on a path you know as i was as i was unwiring the the Behringer 1604A, it just took me down a path to the past where, you know, I've done so much with that board. I really have. I mean, it's it's come a long way and it's done a lot of things, but it can't do what this board can do. And really, what we've done this evening isn't, isn't, isn't just showing off. I mean, I'm not just sitting here chattering. We are, Henry and I are actually testing things. We are making sure that different channels, so like uh, each each thing that you've heard play has played on a different channel, a different track, just to make sure we can do it. We have um, we have the television is is in there. I can't turn it on right now because I forgot to turn it on at the beginning, but it works. Can wire in a telephone easily to this. So and and the beauty of this is everything that it records, it records as an individual track. So each individual track then can be edited as need be, fiddled with as need be, and put back together. And it's just, uh, A, it was an incredible gift. And B, it is going to make this job. I mean, a half hour podcast used to literally take me three to four hours to edit, get it all stitched together, get it in the right order, get pieces, bring in pieces. I couldn't play the intros and outros. I couldn't do that while I was recording because it would it would muck things up, but now because it's individually tracked and individually fed uh, to the to the to the masters, it, it's easy to do, and it's it's actually kind of fun to do now. And I've been playing with it for a couple of days, which again is why I missed the Golden Globes, and I'm not ready to talk about our insane obsession with celebrity culture. Although I could spend a lot of time talking about Rosamond Pike's weird, and I do mean weird dress. She had a weird 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 dress oh man it's just you ever have that happen to you somebody that you're enchanted with enthralled with and they do something just just bizarre and you say to yourself why am I why am I paying attention to this well I wasn't and I don't have to because now I have the task and board then I can work on that. We'll see you next time for a real show.